Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MLC Tech and today we're going to be doing a video on the latest details around AMD's upcoming Zen 5 and Ryzen 9000 line of CPUs. With this video being more centered around the additional features that this platform is set to bring and diving into the latest specifications of the X870E motherboard chipset as well. So sit back and relax as we dive into all the latest details around Ryzen 9000. So as we covered in the video a couple of weeks ago, AMD is preparing to launch a new line of Ryzen 9000 series based on the Zen 5 architecture later this year. And alongside this, it will launch a new line of 8000 series chipset motherboards as well. And whilst these new line of motherboards will be running the same AM5 socket as we saw on Ryzen 7000, there are going to be some pretty significant performance upgrades when it comes to the features with these motherboards. With the new feature of these new motherboards is the mandatory USB 4 support to maximize the performance of Zen 5. And for those of you who didn't catch our last video on the Ryzen 9000 series line of CPUs, let me go over a quick recap of what's expected to be brought to the CPUs this generation. Now the upcoming Ryzen 9000 chips are going to be based on the 4 nanometer Zen 4 chiplet architecture, paired with the same 6 nanometer die that we saw on the Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs. Despite using the same I.O. die, we, we do see some gains and updates to this I.O. die itself, with some updates to the memory controller itself, providing faster and more stable DDR5 support. With it being recommended that aim that these memory controllers can now support DDR5-6400 as the new performance sweet spot, which is a bump up from the standard we saw before on Ryzen 7000 series, that being on average a stable memory frequency of 6000 megatransfers a second. The fact that USB 4 is now going to be a mandatory standard when it comes to the newest chipset and this brings 40 gigabits per second of USB connectivity which is absolutely great to see on a motherboard. But with the introduction of all these new features on these motherboards, to implement this motherboard manufacturers have had to change the approach when it comes to how they do the chipset solution. And with the line of X870E motherboards, manufacturers will have to implement what is called a free chip solution which will feature two Promontory 21 bridge chips plus an ASM4242 USB 4 host controller. Now AMD may allow other approved USB 4 controllers in the future. At the moment a discrete um, chip and separate controller for the USB is necessary to meet the 40 gigabits per second specifications. And while it's really good to see that the fact that we're going to get 40 gigabit per second USB 4 and see some other boards, there is a slight downside when it comes to this added feature. Because of the speeds of USB 4 and the need for a discrete USB 4 controller and chip, this is likely to see a price increase in these motherboards and the chance of affordable X870E motherboards is going to be quite skeptical for this generation. And you may be asking yourself if a USB 4 requires this additional controller to enable the usability of it, then why doesn't AMD just integrate a USB 4 controller on the IO die of the CPU itself? Well, the answer is that AMD could easily take this approach, but the answer is likely going to be cost and time savings. Designing and producing a performant integrated USB controller isn't going to be cheap or fast to do so. So using a third party solution is easier, though taking this approach will mean it will be less optimized for performance. Which, to be honest, I'm not surprised AMD is taking this approach. When I first saw the news that Zen 5 was going to be launched this year, I was like, hang on a minute, wasn't it supposed to be coming out the following year? Surely AMD haven't got this ready. Well, while it's possible with the solution that AMD is taking for the USB 4 controller and other features on these CPUs, that it's going to be relegated to the motherboard itself, it makes me think that maybe Ryzen 9000 might be a little rushed to market and they might cut off some features such as a new integrated USB 4 controller onto the CPU in order to bring it to market this year. Though I do hope the only way that AMD has saved time and cost is with the USB 4 controller and they don't skimp in other areas of the CPU itself, such as the actual core architecture itself. But jumping back to the controller that they're using for the USB 4, AMD is reportedly mandating the use of the AS Media chip to ensure consistency and compatibility across all X870E motherboards, regardless of the manufacturer. So while this could limit the flexibility that a vendor has when it comes to the design of their boards, it provides a reliable baseline experience for the new platform. And it is also expected that both Ryzen 9000 series and this new line of motherboards running the X870E chipset will launch all together this year and the CPUs will also be backwards compatible with previous gen motherboards, that being the 600 series of motherboards and this support will be brought forward with a simple BIOS update and this is thanks to the commitment AMD has brought to support the AM5 socket for the foreseeable future as well. And also most AM5 mobile boards will also feature BIOS flashbacks for easy upgrading too. So you have the option whether you want to 
buy a new motherboard and use a Ryzen 7000 series CPU or buy a 600 series motherboard and upgrade to Ryzen 9000. The fact that you have the options and flexibility for either platform is great to see. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows over at AMD with some reported leaks and rumours coming from AMD suggest that Zen 5 has faced qu some quite significant development challenges, making the goal of launching this lineup of CPUs by mid-2024 slightly ambitious. And it would be pretty surprising if the microarchitecture itself is ready before the summer, though it's expected that this CPU architecture will launch later this year. Though AMD could still position Zen 5 competitively to launch with X3D and Zen 5C, so if there are still some development issues when it comes to this pl platform, they can stagger out the launch of each tier of CPUs with additional features such as X3D or Zen 5C core variants as they spread out the product skew and work up to the high end of CPUs. So it's possible that AMD's got time to flush out its architecture even more. And as I mentioned earlier, there are some concerns that they were trying to rush out this architecture in order to meet the September launch window. So they have some strong competition against Intel's new line of CPUs that are expected to launch on the desktop later this year. But I have great faith that AMD will be able to iron out the issues of this architecture and when it comes to the actual full retail launch of the CPUs that all of the kinks and issues with this architecture has been flushed out by the time that we're able to actually get our hands on the CPUs. Now it's expected that CCPUs will launch in September, October this year, but when I say launch, that could mean anything from full retail release from just the announcement of CCPUs with retail release being much later in the year. It remains to be seen how AMD will stack at the launch of CCPUs, but I am excited to see what AMD has in store for us later this year. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this topic in the comments down below. What do you think of all the news around the latest generation of AMD's Zen 5 architecture? And will you be upgrading to a new motherboard and Ryzen 9000 when they launch later this year? Let me know all of your thoughts around this in the comments down below. Anyway, I have been Madison Charlton from MOZ Tech. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it in any way, shape or form, make sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. And I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye for now.